Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I want to look at custom post types and tool set blocks. This video is part five in a series looking at custom post types and the theming functionality of page builders. By theming, I mean the ability to create content templates for custom post types. Premium page builders now have that ability, but there are a lot of differences between them. This series provides a walkthrough of options so you can see what's involved. In part one, I created a custom post type using CPTUI and advanced custom fields. Part two looked at how to create the single template and archive template for that custom post type using Divi 4. Part three showed the process using Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer. Part 4 looked at how to create theme templates using Elementor 4. This, the fifth installment, is a bit different. Instead of starting with a custom post type created with CPTUI and advanced custom fields, we're going to be using toolset types and the new toolset blocks plugin to create the custom post type and content templates. Toolset was one of the first plugins to introduce the ability to create content templates for custom post types. Now this is a common feature of premium page builders. Many site builders have wondered how toolset blocks measure up to the theming abilities of page builders. In this post we'll find out and have a walkthrough that provides a direct comparison with the page builders we've already examined in the series. I have here a test site that I use for testing toolset using the free Astro WordPress theme. I've got several plugins installed. All-in-one WP migration I use for backup and restore of the site during testing sequences. I also have WP Database Reset installed, and I use that to clear out the site and reset it to the WordPress default between tests. And then there are various toolset plugins installed. For this video, I have toolset types and toolset blocks. Types is the plugin that you use to create the custom post types and custom fields, as well as custom taxonomies. Toolset Blocks is the plugin I'll be using to create the content templates in the Gutenberg editor. I was surprised when I discovered that Toolset Blocks and Toolset Views are actually the same plugin, just branded differently. Toolset Blocks has the default to use the Gutenberg editor to create content templates, while Toolset Views has as a default to use the old Views editor. When you look at the Toolset menu, there is a Settings item here. And if you look at the bottom setting, Editing Experience, Toolset Blocks has Show Only the Blocks interface, whereas Toolset Views by default has Show the Legacy interface. You also have the option to have both and pick between them as you go. So to begin, I'm going to create the same custom post type I've used in other videos with the same custom fields. That's a books custom post type. And I'll change the icon to a book icon. Toolset has this nice ability to pick where on the menu you want your custom post type to show. So I'm going to save it there and then make some changes. Labels we'll leave the same and we're going to create our own taxonomy. So let's go down and choose which features we want to have available for the book custom post type. We want comments and revisions. We want featured image. Let's take a quick look at the options. The defaults are looking pretty good. So let's save that again. Now let's create the custom fields. We'll start by adding a new field group. We'll call it book info. Once you save it, you can choose which custom post type to attach it to. And now let's add our two fields. The first field is a link to the author's website. So we need a URL field. and we'll have it, it won't be required, but we'll have validation that what's been entered is a URL field. And then the second one we want to add is a picture of the author. And that's it. Now let's create our custom taxonomy, our category. I'm going to call it genres. 
we'll go with all of the defaults and we'll add it to the books custom post type. Now let's take a look at the book custom post type in the editor. We have our two custom fields and we have our genre area. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and enter a few books so that we can continue with some data. Okay, I've entered a few book records here. Let's take a look at one. Here we have the title, our content, the genre, the featured image, the link to the author's website, and the author's photo. Let's take a look on the front end and see what they look like. This is what the default archive looks like using the Astra theme. So you can see that the archive needs some help. And let's take a look at the single template. That also needs some help. The image is huge. We've got this padding around here. Plus we don't have any of the meta showing or any of the custom fields. So now let's do some theming. We'll go back to the WordPress dashboard to the toolset menu and we'll click on content templates. We're going to create the single template first. So we'll click add new, say that we want it to apply to books and we'll call it single book template and we're taken into the Gutenberg editor. So what I want to do is have a two column layout with the featured image on the left and the title and meta and content on the right. So I'm going to start with the toolset container block and then I'm going to add a row with two columns. This looks good. Now let's add the toolset image and you can see here these are the toolset blocks that come with the toolset blocks plugin. There's the container, an image, single field, heading, button, a block for fields with text intermixed as opposed to just a single field, a content template, a view, audio file, a conditional, a countdown, progress indicator, repeating field, a gallery, social share, star rating, and video. So I'm going to put in though a tool set image and it asks do you want to use a dynamic source and we want yes. And our source is going to be the featured image. And it pulls in a featured image from the book custom post type. If we wanted to use a different record for preview, we could choose it up here. And having a preview of your data as you're creating your template, as we've seen in the other videos, is a big help when doing the layout. Let's align this center. And then over here, let's enter the heading. And this is going to actually be an H1 and you can't choose that here. But over here we can say that we want the H1 heading and we can choose whether it's a dynamic heading or going to be static text. Now, as you saw with the image, you made the selection over here in the block with headings and many of the other fields, you make it over here. So we'll say that's going to be dynamic comes from the current post and we want the post title. So there's that. Now let's enter the meta. And to do the meta, we're going to do fields and text. So the meta is the author and date and comment information. So we're going to put reviewed by and then enter the post author's name. So here's post author, the name that's good, has my name. We'll put a separator and they'll put on and now we want to enter the post date. So here we'll go with this default format, the date when it was created. And now you see it's entered the date in the front. Even though we had the cursor here, it appended the date to the front. So that's a little glitch there. It might be a Gutenberg limitation. But that's a, a glitch that we had to copy that. And you can see that that could potentially be a, a source of error if you copy and paste that wrong. Now let's add the comments. So let's go find the number of comments. And it has options for what to show if there are no comments, if there's one comment, or if there's more than one comment. And that looks good. Again, it gets pasted in beforehand, which we don't want. All right, so let's select all this. And then in the typography settings, let's make this a little smaller. 
and let's make this a grayish color and maybe let's see if we can add a little bit of a margin to the bottom we'll say 10 pixels all right now let's add the post content so that will be a single field we want it to be a standard field i think and post content the body yes okay good now when we looked at the list of blocks for this, there is no block for the comments. There isn't the option to choose where to place the comments. So Toolset is leaving that to the theme. Now let's add in our custom fields. So on this side, let's add another image for the author's photo. Yes, we want to use an image and we want to use this book info was the field group and it's the author's photo. Good, let's center that. So there's the author's photo. That was easy to do. Now let's add a button for a link to the author's website. Let's change the text. And let's add the dynamic link. So again, we've got it split here. For the photo, it's in this block, but for the button, it's over here. It's going to be book info, and we want the link to the author's website. We might as well open in a new window. Let's center that button and you can see it's pretty huge. So let's see if we can change that a bit. There's an option for an icon. Let's try style settings. We'll go with a blue button and let's change the padding here. We'll have 10 pixels right and left and five top and bottom. So I think maybe we're done here. So let's save that and now go to the front end, take a look at our book single. Here's what we created, but we see we still have all this padding and we have this huge image and title from the theme. So let's go back to the settings and take a look here on the document level. Astra is one of the themes that has an integration with Toolset. So I think we can change these settings right here within the editor where we create the content template and it will apply to all of the book single records. We want to use, right now it's content boxed. We want to use full width contained. And then we want to turn off the featured image and the post meta information because they're being supplied by tool set. Let's see. We also need, I guess, to disable the post title because that was showing twice. So let's save that and now go look again at a single record on the front end. And there we go. Let's test this out. And the button works to go to the author's website. Let's take a look at another book record. And that one works as well. So you can see that was pretty darn easy to create the theme templates for the single. Now let's go create the archive template. Go back to the toolset menu. This time we go to WordPress archives, click add new. We want it to be for our books custom post type. We'll name this book archive. And again, we're taken in to the Gutenberg editor. Now, this view looks a little confusing. There's a lot going on here. And what we see here is it's, it's inviting us to add a block and it's going to output it in the, the WordPress archive loop. Now, the idea here is that you create a single record and then in the archive, WordPress loops over that to create the full page. So I'm going to click here and check this out here. We have loop style. So Toolset is giving us four different layouts to choose from. We have our grid, we have an unordered list, an ordered list, and then we have rows of unformatted data. And this is what I want. Just one column with a row for each book in the archive. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before start with a container block, and then add a column block. Do the same type of layout. Let's put in the featured image. Yes, it's a tool set, and we want the featured image. There we go, that was easy. We'll align that center. Now here we'll enter the heading, 
This time H2 makes sense, and it is a dynamic field. This time we want post title with link, so that looks good. We'll add our post meta again. I probably should have made that other one a reusable block because I'm going to need to do the same process again. Reviewed by and author name separator on. We'll choose the field post date. Go with the default there. Again, we have that glitch where it's pasted in at the beginning instead of at the point of the cursor. And now we'll enter the number of comments. OK, and we'll make it go into the typography. We'll make it smaller. We'll make it a lighter color. And we'll add a little bit of margin here at the bottom. Oops, that's padding. Let's take that out. Go with margin. OK, now we'll add in our excerpt. So I guess it's a single field. And that's a standard field, I guess. Yep, here's post excerpt. We can select the length. So Toolset is going to create the excerpt on the fly because we didn't create manual excerpts. So that's nice. And we have an ellipsis text. That looks good. So let's add a block, a button block. Change this to read more. And it'll be a dynamic button URL, the current post, the post URL. We don't want it to go into a new window in this case. Typography is OK. Let's do the style. Let's go with that blue button. And then for the padding again, let's make it 10 on the sides and 5 on the top and bottom. Let's save this and take a look at what we have. Oh, one thing we need to do here is take a look at the preview. We can see we've got a problem with the various image sizes. So, OK, it's going with full size image. Let's try medium here and see if that standardizes it. So that looks better. And then we should have pagination. And let's center that. Choose the style from over here. OK, I've only got five records, so pagination probably isn't going to be triggered. But let's save this now and go to the front and see what we've got. That's looking. Pretty nice. There's our archive. If we click here, we go to, we should probably have made this a link. But we have the read more button or the title. Let's see, we make it to the single. So that's nice. Let's go back to the archive here. I don't really like that title on the top. I'd rather say book reviews or something like that. So let's change that. And we can go here and edit the book archive. This is, here's my container with the loop. Let's add something above that. Getting kind of a weird thing there. I'm having trouble entering that. So let's add it above it and see if we can drag it. There we go. So I'll be H1 and we'll say book reviews. And then on the document level, let's go down because Astra is a supported theme that has toolset integration. We have this theme options for Astra here. And we will use, again, the full width contained. And we want to change to turn off the archive title. So let's update. Go back and take a look. And there we go. So creating the archive template was also very easy to do. Now, one little test that I've done is to see when creating the archive templates is to see, is it possible to include a custom field in the archive? Some of the solutions like Divi and Elementor Pro don't give you that option by default. You'd have to do some custom coding or in the case in Elementor, you can use some third party plugins. So let's try that also. And I'm just going to add another button here. 
let's put in two columns. Okay, so let's drag this block into here. There's our read more button. Now let's add another button for going to the author's website. And this is going to have a dynamic source, book info, author's website. We'll go into the style settings, blue. We'll change the padding options to match the style we have on the other button. So now let's save that. Go back to the front end. Take a look at our archive. That works. So there are two buttons, one with the custom field. So we were able to include that. that doesn't really look nice. I don't think you do that really, but just to prove the point that you can include custom fields in your archives. In summary and conclusion, I've used Toolset and Projects in the past and have appreciated its power and flexibility. However, Toolset views came to feel awkward and heavy when compared to using a premium page builder. I extensively tested the beta version of Toolset blocks and was disappointed. The beta did not provide a very smooth solution. However, the release version of Toolset blocks is greatly improved and as you saw, it was easy to create the single and archive templates. There were a couple of small glitches. When adding fields to the post meta, they were inserted at the beginning of the content and not where the cursor was, and I had difficulty inserting a block above the Toolset container. These were small problems that didn't stop me. Overall, the process seemed easier to me than with the new Divi 4 Theme Builder and as easy as Beaver Themer or Elementor Pro. Check out the previous videos to see the process when using those solutions. Neither Divi nor Elementor Pro provided a way to add custom fields to the archive template, although you can do that with Elementor Pro using third-party extensions. Adding custom fields to the archive template was possible with Beaver Themer and also with Toolset Blocks, though it's much easier to accomplish with Toolset. Subjectively, using Toolset Blocks to create the templates felt light and easy. I think that the Toolset team has done a good job of leveraging the Gutenberg editor to create a streamlined experience, and I was happy with how easy the process was. So that's it for this review of Toolset Blocks. I hope you found the video useful. Be sure to check out the other tutorials in the series on the WebTNG website. Thank you for watching.